everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today we're going to kick off a series talking about surfacing. Now, I've covered a lot of surfacing topics before in a lot of different videos, but today I want to focus on a single topic and we want to explore a lot of possibilities. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because technology is coming a long way very quickly. Now, we have a lot of access to things like 3D printers, we have great cam software, Mastercam can do so much with complex surfaces. And now more than ever, it's easier to get your complex designs cut, whether they're molded, whether they're cast in urethane, 3D printed, whatever the case might be. It's very important that we focus on these complex surfaces and how to make good quality surfaces with the tools that we have. So what we have on the screen are basically three identical sections that we're going to be dealing with. Now the end goal is to create basically a square or a rounded square type of a housing. So this is basically the top of something. It could be anything. And what we want to focus on are the different ways that we can make the patch that goes between these two edges. So it, it might seem like a simple thing. You might say, oh, we'll just go in, we'll do a, a loft or we'll do a boundary surface or whatever the case might be. But even with a single tool such as the boundary surface, there are a lot of different options and a lot of different things that we need to talk about. The first thing I want to do is go to my surface tab and take a look at what tools we have available. I'm working in 2015, so you'll see some new things like surface flatten on here. And that's great if you're doing things like making composites or you have a complex surface that you need to flatten, make a pattern, whether it's for a shoe or, you know, some other sort of consumer product where you need to flatten that surface. So that's a handy tool and that, that might look a little bit different if you're working in 2014, but everything that we're going to talk about, you can do in 2014. So as we're looking at our tools, extrude and revolve, pretty straightforward, sweep, not really going to do anything for us in this case, and loft, I'm not really going to talk about loft too much. The two things I want to focus on are boundary surface and filled surface. And for the most part, we're actually going to be using boundary surface. I'm going to touch on filled surface just because I want to show you that there are times when filled surface is a great tool and there are times when it's not so great tool. The specific instance we're talking about with these housings, filled surface isn't really a great option for us, but I still want to show you how to create a filled surface with it and why it's not a good option because the why is very important here. We need to understand why it's not a good quality. All right. So, to get started, we're going to focus on these things from left to right, and in the end, we're going to have three individual patches, and we're going to look at them individually and take a look at the differences and the things that each one brings to the table. The first thing that we have is a boundary surface, and we're going to go from this edge to this edge. That seems pretty straightforward. All right, so currently, we have just a contact between the bottom edge and the top edge. We have control over that. We can do a direction vector, tangency to face, or curvature to face. For the most part, I'm going to be dealing with curvature to face. Now, tangency is a great option, but in this case, we don't have any direction to curves. There's no constraint curve here. So I want to work with my curvature relation to make sure that we're carrying the intended geometry of the surrounding surfaces that we're patching to, and we carry it as far as we can into the patch that we're creating. Now, when we don't use any direction two curves, if we're only using direction one curves, we're lacking a lot of control here. Now, this will create a nice high quality surface, but there are going to be some problems with it. So first thing, let's take a look at the control that we do have. We have curvature, tangency, direction, and basically just coincident relation here. So that handles some of the geometry in the curve. Now, as you can see on the screen, we have zebra stripes. We can show curvature combs and maybe get a little bit of an idea of what's going on with the curvature here. And we also have the mesh density that we can increase and we can take a look at these curves. These curves are where the curvature combs are placed. We have a good idea of what's going on here. We'll back the scale down and kick the density up a little bit. Uh, so we have a good idea that we have a surface here that has pretty standard curvature. Looking at these curvature combs, I can tell you, even though I, I did make the file, but I could tell you just looking at these that an arc was used to create this and not a spline because it is consistent all the way through and that's standard of an arc. And then we're transitioning into this blended surface that we're creating. We have an inflection point where it goes from concave to convex and then wraps back around and this upper edge was created with an arc as well. All right, so pretty good idea of what's going on here. We have a little bit more control. We can change the weight 
of each of these edges if we want more weight in one of these uh, as opposed to the other. But one thing I want to point out, one thing I want you to see is that this is a hard point right here. Now we're actually going up, we're transitioning fairly nicely here, but we're going to a very hard edge and we're transitioning back down. And at the lowest point here, in our highest point and lowest point in our concave and convex surfaces, we're having that peak there. Now if I reduce this down, it kind of smooths it out a little bit, but we still have this hard transition here. Not a, necessarily a bad thing as we get farther in the surface where we have more gradual change in curvature. You can see that it sort of blends itself out. It doesn't get rid of itself, but it has still a hard transition there. Again, not the end of the world, but it's something that we need to focus on here. All right, for the purposes of our example, I'm gonna leave the weight, or rather the tangency length, of each of these set to one and say okay. Now this resulting surface looks, I mean it looks pretty good, it doesn't look bad. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the appearance to just be a painted car and painted black. Now the reason I do that is because this gives me a good idea of the, uh, the light and I'm gonna go ahead and turn real view graphics on. All right, so as we look at this, everything looks pretty nice and when we look at reflections, we wanna make sure when they go across the edges, the basically the intersection between these two surfaces, that we don't have a jog or a funky transition here. Now a lot of times it might be good to do things like turn on light cards. So light cards will give you some sort of more distinct reflection here. Now this reflection that's going across this edge, this is exactly what we want to see. It's nice and smooth on both edges. And you can see over here we have the same thing. This is a nice smooth transition. And if we rotate this around, look at it from the top, you can see that, again, this is a nice smooth transition here. If you just had contact on the boundary surface, or if you were using a tangency relation, you might see something different. Let's go ahead and change it to tangency and take a look at the result. So as we look at this, it still looks pretty good, but one thing you'll notice is as we rotate this around, we have a drastic change in curvature, or rather a change in that reflection. Uh, so pretty quickly, it's changing because tangency doesn't really affect the, uh, the whole surface as much as that curvature relation. So if we go back, we change that back to a curvature, you can see that it actually pushes that surface up and it blends it quite a bit more farther into the rest of the surface. All right, so this looks pretty good. So you might be thinking, well, what's the problem here? And there are two problems that we need to deal with. The first problem is lack of control. Now we really don't have any control over what this blended, this boundary surface is doing. Of course, we may not need it. We could simply use the, the curvature of each area and let it do whatever it wants to do inside. And that will produce basically a surface that has the least amount of tension on it. We're not trying to induce any curvature that isn't natural to uh, these two edges blending together. So while it will create a really nice high quality blend between the two, it doesn't really give you a lot of control over what's going on. The second problem is when we go to mirror this thing, and this is really the biggest problem here. When we go to mirror this thing across a plane, for instance, if we're gonna mirror across this plane, what's gonna happen or what we're gonna see is that we don't have good control over that mirror. You can see that this lower surface, that has a pretty nice transition. This upper surface has a pretty nice transition. But this boundary surface that we created, we can see a hard edge there. And you can see as the reflections come up to it, they actually jump and go across. If we look at it from the top, you can see a very distinct line there where that surface ends and this surface starts. So the problem here is that we don't have any control over what's happening as this surface exits across this plane. And, and the same thing happens over here. If we mirror it across the right plane, I'll go ahead and mirror these bodies and we'll grab these ones as well. So as we mirror this across, we don't necessarily have any control over what's happening to this surface as it crosses the plane. You can see very slightly that there is a jump there. There's another hard edge there. This is a big problem, especially when you're dealing with modeling just a quarter of your part and with the intention of mirroring it across a plane and then mirroring that across a plane. And this is pretty standard because when you try to control this type of curvature on the entire part, it becomes a much bigger task as opposed to when you're dealing with just this small corner here. So that is the first thing I wanted to talk about and that was the boundary surface without having any direction to curves, any control. 
And as you can see, it does make a very nice surface, but we have an issue when we go to when we go to mirror this part and we don't really have a whole lot of control over what's going on. So that's going to be the end of the first video. If you guys have any questions on what you saw here, please email us at SolidWorksSupport at MLC-CAD.com. And please follow along the next couple videos where we talk about a few more of these different examples and topics and how you can get high quality surfaces but still have the control over it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.